the Bible is like the word of God. So, so we say the Bible is the inspired word of God, insofar as it's not the word as in the second in person the of the Trinity. Uh, writings of God is so, like, so God, no, you've got a word in is. Um, what they don't believe it or they don't believe it. Uh, Second Timothy three sixteen. Second Timothy three sixteen. It says all Scripture is God breathed. God breathed crucially doesn't mean that he's written it down. It means, and, and the prophets, granted, they still have their own writing styles and stuff like that, but he's inspiring, inspiring them to write this. And he's, he's inspiring them so that the Holy Spirit is indwelling the, in, in them and they have no fault in their writing. Granted, when someone write, copies down that writing, they can make minor faults. Sure, a scribe can make minor faults in writing down that writing. We don't, we don't reject that. But, as a whole, God has protected his scriptures and we still have them today. And I think that's clear when you look at the scriptures. For example, you can look back at old scriptures and you can see major, majorly we have the same scriptures and we, as we there did back then. certainly some differences. No, but, uh, I mean, but a, lot, big bulk of it. A, lot of, a lot of the differences you would say, first of all, can be solved. Yeah. Realistically, a lot of them are, for example, problems with the Masoretic text when we would grant the Septuagint as being more, more, um, more um, accurate. I am not a textual criticism guy. Uh, he's into that, he's reading up on it uh, slowly. He's still at the start of his, his little journey on textual criticism. But I can tell you from what I've looked into, any, any contradiction, for example, 4222, that's solved in the Septuagint, which is an older version than the modern Masoretic. I guess like, I'm, I'm curious about this notion that Jesus was necessarily perfect because he is part of, like, he's God, he's the Son, which is one of the attributes of God. And, Not an attribute. Or like, well, what did he call an it? attribute means a part. He's the fullness of the essence. He's, he's, so he's the full communication of God's knowledge. So, my... But so Jesus as a person, or like as a entity moving around, living, doing things, performing miracles and whatnot, preaching and whatnot, he had to be perfect. But the actual descriptions of him from the Gospels and whatnot, those were just div maybe divinely inspired, but they, they're not necessarily perfect. No, no, it's divinely perfect. inspired means God breathed. God, God breathed. But so, so, so. But they, there's space for error. I'm no, no, there's like, not. Uh, okay, there's not space for error in the original apostles' writings and the original prophets' writings. There's space for error when people start to copy that down and then copy it, copy it, copy it. There's definitely space for error there. If I, if I, the same way, if I mistranslate, if I mistrans, if I get a text that God breathes, and then I write it down and I accidentally miss a, miss a letter. Not every scribe, not everyone who produces a Bible today is, is, is writing through the Word of God, of course not. But the original is, is God breathed. Okay. So while there can be minor mistakes, God, for the most part, has preserved His Word. So would you say that just to have the most accurate uh, version of this God breathed uh, text, which is so important, you would kind of necessarily have to refer back to the oldest versions of every one of the Gospels. And, yeah, yeah, so, you know, so, so that's, that's ideally textual, how you study it, right? textual criticism is a big thing in Christianity. Uh -huh. A lot of people go into it and it's a very good thing. We've got, we've got a lot of resources whereby we can extrapolate what would be the true meaning of the text. Of course, there's stuff that, you know, it's been through so many translations. You're going to have discrepancies which are hard to explain or which you have to go to a different translation to explain. But realistically, nothing changes in what you're going to get out of that scripture. So you can still read, you can read the NIV, which is a terrible version. Or it's not even a terrible version, it's just like very paraphrased. You can read that and still say that's God's word. That's fine. It might have bits that are paraphrased, bits that are wrong, bits that are minor. But you're still going to see Jesus through that scripture, crucially. I'm just, I guess I'm just curious about, again, about this notion of Jesus being perfect. Because, like, would you say that the, like, part of me thinks, like, or feels that Jesus, do you believe that he was fully human in some sort of way? Yeah, he was fully human. He was fully human, right? Fully human, fully God. So he was fully human. Fully so God, we so. would say that, like, his flesh is, his flesh is perfect insofar as um, there's no fault in it. It's not perfect insofar as it's created. So it's right. imperfect because it has, it, it is created. It has a final cause outside of itself. Technically, it's imperfect, but not imperfect in so far as it has fault. There's no fault in it. It's just right. created. I guess like that's kind of where I'm 
that's you might have just started with all it, creation. Huh? That's general with all creation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he said earlier, anything that's yeah. kind of created out of it, like, it has to be not perfect. That's why I was curious. Okay, yeah. so is, does Jesus have to be perfect and not perfect at the same time? So, like, so. Because, uh, like, he's perfect because he's God, but he's not. His human nature is still perfect. It's, it's, well, it's, uh, his humanity, his humanity is perfect. Hold on, hold on. His, his humanity is, hold on, hold on. His, his humanity is perfect insofar as it's got no fault. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's still created, his, his humanity, because humanity is created. Um, yeah. But it, when we say imperfect, we generally have this idea of, oh, it's faulty. It's, it's got something wrong with it. Jesus was sinless. He had no fault. But he, part of him was created and therefore technically you can call it imperfect insofar as it has a final cause outside of itself. Uh -huh. uh, so, I mean, maybe it's just semantics, but to me it's a bit odd to say that he was per he, like, he is, was perfect and at the same time then in some way he wasn't but he was. No, no. So, so, so the hype, for example, well, uh, we call it what's, it's what's called righteous indignation in Christian thought. Righteous indignation means you, you're granted wrath by, uh, by, as in you're granted to be angry at certain things, at sin, for example. Um, this is God. God has all right to be angry, uh, to, to um, judge the people who, who, are, who are doing sin. He created us and if we're doing sin, He has all right to judge us. For them to be selling stuff in the, His sacred temple, He has the right to be angry. And He has the right to exercise wrath. Um, and I don't see that as him losing himself or him being imperfect. I see that as him a justified response to what was happening. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I mean, it seems a bit contract to me, but fair enough. I mean, I'm trying to think what's the good yeah. Like the thing is, you can have a pit. Like a lot of it's like you have opinions on it. You can see oh. Maybe that's not the case. You can see it as maybe that's not the case. But when I'm explaining what happens, I don't think there's a valid objection to what I'm saying. More so you can say, oh, it could not be that. Like, for example, you can say, um, let's say I said I, I made a valid exposition for why the Bible is the truth. You could say, oh, it could not be that case. But with my explanations, there's not something where you can say, oh, it's definitely, you can't disprove what I'm saying. I don't think you can. I don't. I don't think you could demonstrate that him being, him exercising wrath in the temple shows that he's imperfect. That's what I'm trying to say. You can have the opinion that that's imperfect, but I don't think you could demonstrate that in a way that it can't. You can't have it the other way. And, and of course, like him dying as a human doesn't necessarily stain his perfectness. Yeah, so, so his humanity is changeable. It has accidental properties. Accidental properties are, for example, if my hair grows, I've gained a property. I have longer hair, but it's not essential to my being. So humanity can change. He can, he can his body and soul can separate for a while, which would be death and then come back together. That's not, that's qua humanity or acute according to his humanity, meaning the necessary constituents for this to, uh, change to occur would be from his incarnation into humanity. And crucially, his divine spirit does not, nothing happens to its divine spirit. His divine spirit does not change in any way. It's only the things which it is in, in, um, in composition with change insofar as they disconnect. And that would be death. And then, he overcomes death in the, in the resurrection. He goes down to Hades and then he comes back up and overcomes death. I mean, it's, uh, I, mean I, I, I like your references. For, it's been a long time since I've read the Bible, so I like yeah. your references to a specific Bible. Uh, I'm curious what you think just more generally, like about, say, people who don't get the chance to, to be brought up Christian or, so, or, or learn even about Christianity. That so here's the thing, um, my church specifically, we would believe like, we have this idea of salvation is through the church or through Christianity, it's through Christ, yeah? Extraordinary grace, we do not know. I can't, I can't tell you how God judges people who he's never reached. I can't tell you. 
we have this concept of God, God being loving. So we would think God being loving, he would, he would judge fairly. But we are not, we crucially do not speak on this, in this judgment. Because we don't know. And, and I can't tell you how you're going to be judged if you die today. I can't tell you how they're going to be judged if they die today. Based on, I don't know them. Uh, and I don't, I don't know to what extent outside of his church God judges. I don't know. I'll see you, bro. I'll mention you guys later. Yeah, 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 cool, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, say nice. You don't want to be. Uh, I'm good, I'm gonna go, 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 I'm